Welcome to Integrated Rhythm, two swing dancing besties. That's Chisomo Salamani and myself, Bobby White. And, uh, uh, um, all right, I'm not going to lie to you. I am fried. It was a fun day with airports and not sleeping. And our guest as well had some things that fried them today. I know, I know. It's glorious that we are back to the place where airports can fry us. So that's nice. I think it's still a great podcast episode, but we're a little uh, kind of like that. So uh, we're doing something special today. What you need to know is that we tried to make this as good of an audio experience as possible while still showing some video during our podcast interviews. If that will drive you nuts, then maybe watch this one on YouTube so that you too can see the video that we're going to be talking about. However, if you just want to give it a try, uh, once again, we tried to make sure it was as easy as possible to listen to without you having to see exactly what was going on. But we also might have failed about that. So you see, it's, it's, it's a lot going on. Welcome to Integrated Rhythm. Oh, also, don't forget to send letters and questions and such to intrhythm at gmail.com. We'd love to have your questions so that we can answer them on a podcast. Also, we, we, don't, we won't say your name if you don't want to, so keep that in mind. Next week is Frankie Manning's birthday. Almost everyone who's been in the scene for a few years knows at least something about the incredible Frankie Manning. So we thought it'd be fun to talk about four of the great dancers that partnered with him. So we will be telling the stories of four incredible black women. And we will be telling these stories with two incredible black women here, Laura Ryan and Chisomo Salamani, who are welcome to respond and react and interrupt and cut me off and say whatever inspires them. And to keep things on schedule, I may comically plow ahead sometimes anyway. So one of the things that's gonna be kind of weird about this is that we're going to talk a lot about them through Frankie's lenses. And that's not because that's the ideal way to do it. It's really the only way we can do it because none of these dancers got to tell their stories to the modern scene that I know of at least. And Frankie's book and the stories he's passed on to others are the main sources for these biographies. So please note that we wish we could talk about them as individuals painted by their own words and many different sources. But since we don't have those, we're just very thankful to Frankie Manning for being willing to share so much about those dancers. And an additional shout out to two of his primary story collectors, Cynthia Millman and Judy Pritchett for publishing those stories and making them available to the public. The first partner of Frankie's we're going to look at is Frida Washington. She was one of his first competition partners in the mid 1930s. Now we don't know a lot about Frida. We haven't found her in any census, death records, or obituaries, at least that I know of. Uh, so she's kind of a mystery. But here's what Frankie said about her. Frida and I were very close. She was one of my first partners, and she lived right next door to me. We would go to the dance together and come home together, and she would go upstairs in her house, and I would go upstairs in my house. So there's kind of this like great old movie friendship kind of thing where you can imagine Frankie opening up his window and yelling out, to the window across on the apartment on the other side, you know, and seeing if she's home. And, you know, you imagine there's probably like clotheslines or tin cans with strings involved or, you know, like those yeah. great old fashioned friendships, I think, is what I get when I hear him talk about it. Uh, Frida was the partner that helped Frankie create the over the back air step that has become the legend of the first air step. For those of you who don't know the story, we're not going to go too much into it because we want you to listen to Frankie tell it. But basically, the new up-and-coming young Whitey's Lindy Hoppers were going to have a contest against the older veteran performers of Shorty George's Lindy Hoppers. Now, Frankie had seen Big B and Shorty George perform enough to predict that they were going to end their spotlight with their signature step, which mm -hmm. is where Big B locks 
arms with Shorty George and she bends over and pops his him up onto her back. His legs are kicking in the air and they walk off. And so that was their big finish. Frankie gambled that they were going to do it. And so he went to, to Frida and said, you know that step where Big B picks up Shorty on her back? And Frida apparently said, yeah, but I'm not picking you up on my back because Frankie is a very large muscular man. Uh, but let's hear just let's hear Frankie just tell a little bit of the story. You know, here's something that this little lady had never seen before. And she know damn well I didn't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, took her two seconds and she said, okay. <laughs> I, I, I got to the point where I, I lift her up on my back, and she's on my back, and I say, okay, now roll over, baby, roll over. So she starts to roll over, and as she rolls over, she pulls me down with her, and both of us laying on the mattress. And as we lay down on the mattress, the door opens and my mother walks in. <laughs> So that's Frankie Manning telling the story. And then they had to get married for that was the law. <laughs> Lies. Uh, so if you've never heard Frankie tell the story of this contest, listeners, uh, you should re you really should. Don't just read about it in the book. Go on YouTube and just Google Frankie Manning first air step story and you'll probably find there's a few versions of him out there telling it, which are great. Um, he's a master storyteller. So... Um, there's a great discussion to be had about the story and oral history and the question of how we know whether or not to believe our pioneers when they tell us the stories of their youth. We're not going to go into that today, uh, but I will give a quick throw out that uh, I've not personally seen anything that refutes the airstep story and all the footage I've seen more or less supports his timeline. Um, but what I would love to talk about for just a moment is creative ownership. If the legend is indeed true, did Frankie Manning invent the first air step or did Frankie Manning and Frida Washington invent the first air step? Ooh. Great I mean, question. What were you saying, Laurel? Well, is it, is it possible to, within a partner dance uh, where you only know how to do one of the parts, uh, is it possible to invent a partner move by yourself? Ooh, that is a power question. If it's a partner <laughs> dance, somebody doing it by themselves. Look within your hearts and you know, search yourself. And <laughs> think about it. <laughs> I want you to do the work. Uh, <laughs> do the work, do it. <laughs> Don't just do a book club. Do the exactly. Work. Do the work and figure out if you can invent a partnered move by yourself. I just I imagine can... them doing a book club to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to need Frankie Manning's allies. autobiography. We're going to need Norman Miller's autobiography. We're going to need to someone to <laughs> look at the clips and write down what they're seeing so that we can use that as a primary <laughs> reading source. Yeah. Research. Absolutely. Research. Yeah. <laughs> What were you going to say, Bobby? I cut you off. What were you going to say? No, I, what's funny is I was just going to point out the thing that Laurel had said earlier. First of all, I think it's amazing that we have Frida's story, but Laura, Laurel, you brought up a really good point about like how we have it, like that there's no other, like, in, like I thought that was such an awesome point that you had. You thought you had. Yeah, I mean, uh, like she had to say, yeah, I'll try this with you. Um, and had it been a, a different partner, it might've either not gone well, or they might've said no. Uh, I know when I, by the time I started swing dancing, I already had like lower back injuries. So if somebody had been like, hey, I'd like to join a contest. And uh, you know that move that you've seen people do? What if we do it, but you like roll over me, like roll over my back and be like, um, so um, like I have some nerve damage along, but like I would launch into the, 
the, a detailed explanation of my medical uh, inability to do it. And we would not be inventing any moves. So like credit where it is due uh, to Madam Washington for uh, like, and apparently like just being absolutely willing uh, to have that like competitive spirit and, uh, <laughs> and like the camaraderie, but, like, okay, me and the neighborhood kid are going to try these moves with a, <laughs> with, but a mattress to prevent us from breaking our necks. And uh, let's find out what happens. It's like, I yeah. like Frankie, so I'm going to do this thing. I mean, I think the ultimate answer that we all know is that while we often give credit to men for things, um, that they did, they invented it together. Like it wasn't just Frankie Steele. He might have had the idea, but in order for it to happen, we need two people. Like he, because otherwise, it would just be called a backflip, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so Frankie himself talked in his book about how the dance was pretty male centric back in the day, which also tended to, but not always, mean leader centric. Um, but I also, I, I don't see him meaning that completely and thoroughly, right? Like, I can't picture George Greenwich going up to Norma Miller and saying, I have an idea. Can I try something on you? And have Norma not have any advice or creative input. Like, I, I can't picture that. And I think that's the same with many of those dancers. Like, I, I think creative input was something that everyone was contributing. And, you know, they were practicing with each other all the time. Like, how can you not get a lot of creative input and having been in many partnerships, when I say, can I try something? Um, and unless it's literally perfect the first time, there's going to be feedback. There's going to be things that affect it. There's going to be places that it will, that will change its trajectory. And especially yeah. any fancy move I've ever prepared for a contest has tons of feedback and thoughts and inspiration from the partner. And I don't see you being able to, like, I don't see you be able to invent a lot of those incredible air steps that they did without plenty of that. Well, I mean, you know, from Frankie telling it that the first time it did not work. And so, you know, that like, after they have to explain like why they like these two young people are on the bed uh, <laughs> to, to mom, uh, like, Man, we're just practicing dance, I promise. Um Upright, and, <laughs> dancing upright. <laughs> yeah. And then she can be like, oh, that's that newfangled stuff with all the hips swinging and the jazz music. Um, and, but, you know, like after, because clearly like we know that they got it right and, and uh, to the point that they were able to share it with other people. And so, I mean, it's not as like she Frida, she wasn't mute during that time. Like she was, she didn't, she would have had something to say and she would have, you know, it, it would have been impossible um, to, uh, to, to find something that did work, to find a way for it to work without uh, her feedback. So yeah, like we, yeah, we know it didn't work the first time. So <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> By their I'm powers not, combined. Yeah. <laughs> for my little conclusion paragraph, I said, I guess ultimately for me, it doesn't hurt, nor does it do a disservice to add her name to the creative ownership, to give her the benefit of the doubt that if she was getting chucked over and over and over again while they figured it out, that she offered insight or feedback. Um, yeah. if, you want, if you want to be uber specific, you could say that maybe the original vision was Frankie's, but that the execution belongs to both of them. Because you know... Uh, What's very important about this story is, yes, Frankie threw the first air step, but Frida Washington landed the first air step. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, she landed it. I love yeah. it. Um, I, uh, yeah. I think that, like, erasure of people is something that we have to consider, right? Like, a, the reason why we don't know about different people's histories, I and mean, even if we think about, like, Native Americans, it has to do with erasing them. And that has to do with like our, our collective goals as a society. And so I think it's really important to just to say her name, right? Like Kimberly Crenshaw says, say her name. So the more we say Frida Washington, like while we may not be able to find a lot of information about her, 
the more that the world gets to know about this incredible contributor to dance. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, like acknowledging her contributions does not diminish right. in keys by yeah. any, any stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people uh, get up in arms with when you start like bringing up the names of forgotten people in history. It's like, well, I mean, then how will we remember these other people's names who everybody knows? Yeah. Like, well, obviously that's not a problem. So yeah. <laughs> we can just add a, you know, add a line or two, maybe even a paragraph, maybe a chapter to this, uh, to like our, our personal knowledge. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I think that's, that's an important point, Somo. Yeah, you're like, oddly enough, there are hundreds and thousands of books <laughs> with their names in it. Oddly. So, <laughs> a couple of names, we're actually doing okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm Bobby said that Frida Washington, they're like, we can't find her in records. Right. Uh, so, you know, this uh, spy, perhaps, um, we don't know. Um, like, <laughs> or like fruit stand salesperson. Like we don't know. We don't know. So uh, this fruit stand uh, owner slash spy of a woman. Uh, <laughs> papaya, a kiwi. Uh, like sh- she obviously like. Th- it's, we're not going to be like Frankie who, just because we remember that he had this first partner who helped him create something that we all know about already. Um, and so I think the answer to the question, Bobby, is yeah, they both created it. Yes. Said, uh, I love Frankie you- walked so that Rita Washington could fly. <laughs> I'll be here all night. Yes, yes, standing ovation for Laurel. I love it. Yes. So one uh, small step for man, one air step for woman. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So soon after the contest, Frida's family moved back south to where they had come from, and that's the only sentence I've I've read about what happened to her after the contest. Uh, And that's when Frankie lost touch with her. And so there's Frida Washington's on the record. Now that, you know, uh, there's a great opportunity for me and some of research, fellow researchers to help find stuff on them. If you know about Frida Washington, please share it with the world. Um, We would all be very excited if you did. All right. Tell us if she was a fruit, if she sold fruit or was a spy. And or both. Inquiring selling, minds. Selling fruit was her disguise for her espionage work. Yeah. Yes. And so if she had the, to leave the way as Lindy Hoppers because espionage, they were going to find out. Because right. yeah. they found out that she did this air step, they were like, wait a second. Yeah, that'll blow up your spot. The eagle has right landed. Quick. The eagle has landed. <laughs> yes, the eagle has landed. The CIA spied her and was like, that was- <laughs> Yeah, we told you to. The eagle Keep landed and it was on beat <laughs> to the song and it killed it. And so, yeah. yeah pump. Okay. <laughs> Lucille Middleton. Lucille Middleton was born in South Carolina in 1916, yet another member of the Great Migration. Came to Harlem, lived with a whole mess of a family. Ten of them lived in her household. Now, we also don't know a lot about Lucille. We know that she was in Whitey's Hopping Maniacs, the tight-knit troupe of three couples that Frankie managed and performed all over NYC and the region. She was known for her twists, or what we would call swivels today, and she was a partner in the dancing couple that Frankie called the Comedy Team, which is a concept that was very important to Lindy Hop at this time, and which we should totally bring back, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Though uh, certainly many of the comedy teams could be funny and do humorous storytelling through their dancing. 
they often were a pairing of extreme body type differences. So a smaller than average with a bigger than average person, a shorter than average with a taller than average person, that kind of thing. For instance, the smaller shorty George and the tall big B are the most iconic comedy team in Lindy Hop history. The move they did that inspired Frankie's air step was a comical move. Well, Lucille Middleton was taller than average, and her partner, Jerome Williams, was shorter than average, but not by much. Uh, but Jerome's signature move was to turn around with his head low and have her bump him in the face with her butt, sending him <laughs> flying. And he does this move really well because you can see him do it in the film Sugar Hill Masquerade, by the way. So if you want to see a hilarious move, check out Sugar Hill Masquerade. Now, you may have heard about the rule Whitey had that partners couldn't be romantically involved with one another. Mm. Research has shown time and time again that this rule was often ignored. <laughs> or perhaps it wasn't even there yet when Lucille and Frankie started partnering together, touring together, and started what sounded like a pretty rocky relationship. And one of his other couples he was managing, Billy Williams and Mildred C Cruz, were also in a rocky relationship. They ended up splitting up on the tour, and Mildred married a tap dancer she met on that tour. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, what? It, <laughs> Wild. <laughs> it, 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 it ends with Frankie walking around Paris all night, I think, if I recall correctly. He just like walks around until the dawn thinking about things. Thus inspiring American <laughs> in Paris, or? <laughs> 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 just like smoking a cigarette and kicking rocks into the sand like just yeah. imagine his his beret on off kilter oh, to the side yeah. smoke <laughs> coming from his cigarettes <laughs> Ooh, la, la. Uh, <laughs> so uh lucille and frankie performed in radio city rebels and keep punching and you can see her solo dance in the famous big apple scene she's the tall one in the longer black skirt and together they took third place in the 1939 harvest moon ball Let's watch Lucille dance some. Now, since a lot of our audience are listening to the podcast and can't see it, I'll play it with very low music, and I'd love for y'all to say out things that you see or recognize or anything that comes to your mind. All right, so we got some swing outs. Oh, the tandem into the A frame. Oh. So a lot of these are just absolutely uh, classic things that you've definitely seen before. Um, you just didn't know who, who the name of the dancer you were looking at. I mean, she moved like she's one of those dancers that just very cool. Um, yeah. And maybe that comes with being taller than average. I don't, I don't know if you just like look super chill because <laughs> it takes like that, like that much longer for your. <laughs> Uh, movement to travel from the shoulder to the wrist or whatever. Uh, but she's just, she I mean, you can tell, like she's just uh, this very um, pretty young woman who's just kind of like, like grooving. She, she has a really chill style and like, I, um, I can't tell exactly what is what style of hair she has, but it looks shorter, and I love that. Like she's got kind of like everything you said. Everything about her is just cool. Like it's cool, calm, collected, short hair, um, great, like graceful movements. But like you said, it's like why why is it that particular style? But um, I think I've seen taller dancers kind of move in a similar way to her. You know. Um, that uh, Helena comes to mind. Like there's like kind of like a cool a similarity in there, but um, something that I found really interesting 
uh, for those of you who can't see the screen, I've just fr frozen it at a swing out that Frankie and her do in Keep Punching in the Jitterbug contest. And her, 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 the arm connected to Frankie's hand is completely straight or all, is like very, very straight. And this is one of the few, if the only Whitey's Lindy Hoppers that I've ever seen to let their, the follower to let their arm go out that straight and to open up their body that far away from their leader. Yeah. I mean, it looks like just in this frozen frame, it almost looks like she's doing more of, uh, like she's about to start an Applejack or something like that because of her posture. It's not that kind of, um, I mean, she's just much more upright. Yeah. Uh, from the waist down and then bent over like her, she's leaning towards him, but then yeah, her arm being fully extended is yeah. uh, highly unusual. Yeah. So that's Lucille Middleton. Yeah. And uh, Lucille. let's see, <laughs> right? Little Richard, so good. Did you, he, I like, I just, quick aside, uh, I've been getting a little bit more into Little Richard as part of just like getting into American music in general. And he was like Prince before Prince. Yeah, he was, he was a real wild one. And like his fashion and his like, just like boldness. Yeah. Mad respect for Little Richard. In my mind, as far as like uh, rock and roll, uh, musicians go in my mind there's like a clear progression from like little richard to rick james to prince i'm like uh, these yeah. people make sense to my brain I'm like of oh, course yeah. of course they're all just like opening the door for each other but after you sir oh thank you after <laughs> you sir <laughs> and then prince is like what if i get my booty cheeks out uh <laughs> Yeah, it's it all it all follows. Um, uh, we don't Isaac know. Comes to mind as well. Sorry. So, what did you say to someone? I said Isaac Hayes just comes to mind as well because uh, he's, Isaac you know, he, he, he's Hayes. like, like I'm gonna be. By the time <laughs> I get to Phoenix. <laughs> so good. When we think about extravagance and like. God, yeah, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That man is like so beautiful. This. Yes, exactly. Like, enjoy everything about my chest. Just enjoy. Yeah. It. And Bask. copious amounts of jewelry. Like, yes. <laughs> yes, I will enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so we don't know of her, of Lucille Middleton dancing with the Whitey's Lindy Hoppers after 1940. And she is likely the Lucille Middleton that the Death Records show died in 1998. So once again, kind of a mystery there about Lucille's, uh, what, what happened after, after the dancing. You heard enough and now it's time for the break. Hey everybody, this is Bobby White from Integrated Rhythm. We're here to ask you to please consider donating to the podcast. You can do so by going to patreon.com slash integrated rhythm. You can do so by Venmoing at Bobby Swungover. And make sure to put a little IR in the note so we make sure it goes to the right people. You can also do so by PayPaling at Bobby White 3. And once again, putting a little IR in the in the window there. Doing so will help us keep this podcast going, and we love doing it, and we hope you love it too. If you can't afford to donate at this time because times are rough, we totally understand. We don't want you to put yourselves out. We want you to keep enjoying the podcast for free. However, if you have a little bit of pocket change in your pocket, we would greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thanks, and have a great day. We're back. Willa May Ricker was born Willa May Briggs in 1910. Frankie considered her one of his best friends as they grew up. They were with each other the first night they both went to the Savoy Ballroom. 
She was one of the greatest Lindy Hoppers ever, Frankie says in his autobiography. She made every partner look good. And indeed, the leaders seemed to love dancing with her. She danced with Snooky Beasley in A Day at the Races, with Al Menz in Hell's a Poppin', with Frankie Manning in the Spirit Moves footage, and with Leon James in the famous 1943 Life magazine shoot. That's quite a dance card. Now, Frankie told historian Judy Pritchett she was one of the greats of Lindy Hop. She was the soul and heart of the dance. She married her teenage sweetheart, Billy Ricker, in the late 1930s, and they lived happily ever after for the rest of their lives together. Uh, Billy was also a Whitey's Lindy Hopper and is best known as the chef in Hell's a Poppin'. They did not partner together and seemed to be very happy not partnering together. <laughs> Lessons to be learned. I think so. Um, <laughs> often in his autobiography, Frankie Manning mentions moments when they were stealing steps, making up moves, or creating choreographies. And almost always, Willa May is mentioned as an advisor, which kind of goes back to our earlier discussion. He also thought Willa May was one of the most versatile Lindy Hoppers at the Savoy. She also probably has the most footage of all the original Harlem dancers, uh, of, of the Harlem followers. Uh, we won't watch all of it because it's about seven minutes of footage all put together, but we will watch a little bit. So let's watch a little bit of Willa May Rickard. Now I'm going to have to edit out that pause between let's watch. <laughs> Will it may work. I feel like this clip from Hells of Poppin is so iconic. Like this is what people think about when they when when they don't know swing dancing, this is what they think about. Yeah. Um, By the way, that was Will May Ricker that we just passed by. Being a little cutie. So, her energy. Fearless. Is yeah. Uh, this is her on the right. So, if Lucille was like cool and had that kind of energy. Um, uh, Willa May has like fierce, like I think, yeah. fire, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like no, no holding back. Yeah. Uh, I mean, everything's out there. I love her arms so much. She's one of my favorite armologists. <laughs> okay, we'll just go back and watch a little bit of her solo dancing because it really shows her arm movement really well. Yeah, she definitely uses her whole body. I mean, everybody uses her whole body, all of the original dancers do, but you can see like she is like following through everything. You see her movement through her fingers, through her toes, it's everywhere. You know, yeah. she's got energetic. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's one of the, so for anybody listening who's like doing the whole, like, what do I do with my arms thing? Like, uh, she's, she's one to watch. That's the eternal problem is like, what do I do with these things? I get like floppy fish hands. And then uh, I'll like, I'll hold my arm like I'm a bodybuilder and I'm just too muscular to put it totally up my side, except I'm not. And it's not, I'm just, it's just kind of like, slightly propped out. Uh, so <laughs> that's a thing. Uh, I love seeing um, these, I mean, granted they were professionals from a very early age and, uh, and are inventing a lot of the stuff that they're doing or taking movements from uh, chorus girls and tap dancers and uh, adapting it for their own purposes, but like, doing it at, in the style, doing it at the pace, like everything uh, they're bringing to it is like individualized and and yeah. and original. And it's so, it's just so cool to see somebody who's like, whose dancing style is so clearly recognizable, um, yeah. regardless of who she's dancing with. Right. Yeah. As adaptable as she was to different partners, um, 
which I think like used to be like, I used to be the hallmark of good following. It was like, you could adapt to anybody. Um, that uh, regardless, she was always dancing like her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that, I think that's really common in those original dancers. They dance like themselves, even like the more adaptable or less adaptable, they still dance like themselves, just like you said. And uh, for, for those of you at home who are agonizing over your arms, another thing you can do is go and watch why these Lindy Hoppers and actually it'll help you take a breather and be like, oh, it's okay if my arms are sometimes weird. A lot like Willa Mae Ricker's arms are, the fact that her arms are so good looking all the time is, is the exception to the rule. Like, you know, like these were young dancers throwing a lot of energy into it and they didn't necessarily care that much about what their arms were doing a lot of the times. And so like, you can also take, so yes, you can look at Willa Mae Ricker to get some great arm inspiration, but you can look at the other whites in the hoppers and be like, okay, I don't have to like kill myself if my arms don't look great all the time. Yeah, it's what I see across why these Lindy Hoppers is organic movement, right? It's not manufactured. They're not like, I'm going to do this perfect arm thing here. She's like, yeah, exactly. My arm is going to be perfectly placed right here. <laughs> you know, and so it, yeah. it is, it is an, um, it is an extension. Like that's the thing that I really appreciate about Lola May is that her arms are moving because her body's moving and she is dancing with her entire soul all the way past her fingertips. And so like every bit of her arm is engaged, not because she's like manufacturing this thing where her body's going to do a thing, you know? So. Yeah. Aside from remembering her for her dancing, Frankie Manning and Norma Miller both remark in their books that Willa May was both incredibly fashionable as evidenced by every picture of her and naturally dependable. So the, the fashionable thing, readers, if you're playing along at home, just Google like Willa May Ricker and Life Magazine, for instance, and you'll see that the famous images that she took with Leon James in the Life Magazine I'll share my screen here so that those of you who are watching this on YouTube can see the pictures. Watching it on YouTube. Benefits of watching us. We get to see the pictures and the movies. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Everyone is also blessed by that song. Everyone can do that song. <laughs> so, I mean. Yes. Look at how well she dresses. And every time you see her, she's well dressed. Look um, at that hair. That hair is like doing some things midair. It's like perfect. It's like it yeah. will be here. Yeah, we're looking at the picture of Leon James and Willa May doing the, the kick through where you know they're in tandem position and she jumps up while he kicks through her legs. So that's the famous picture that we're looking at now. You can see her hair perfectly coiffed. You can see the nice blousy shirt and the big belt with the like pinstripe uh, dress, skirt. I mean, even her socks are like the perfect height. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I was literally just taking that. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, her socks are like perfectly like. And they look like it, they might match the belt. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll bet you they do, you know? Yeah. I'll bet you they do. Also, can we talk about her toes? I don't know. I'm just like mesmerized by her toes. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a thing that I really love. I've been uh, working with some non-authentic uh, jazz dancers um, to talk about like Charleston and a little bit of um, Lindy Hop. And I had to tell them like, the thing we're not going to do is like, fully point our toes and when she's like it, she's not pointing them purposely but she's again like you said uh Chisomo, it's this full extension um or like like a the the effect of her dancing with her whole body where when she's kicking her toes are um not not fully pointed but like you can tell that they're engaged they are like she's she's not doing like but either you know like it's it is like i am jumping and my yeah 
but what's hilarious is like we are definitely deep into the nerdy minutia of like <laughs> staring yeah. at pictures like I love what her ligament on the left side of her leg was <laughs> doing <laughs> in this precise moment. <laughs> and tomorrow I shall try to replicate it. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not yeah. And she'd probably just be like, like, I was just jumping. Do you not know how to jump? And I'd be like, not really. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Getting into the, and that's another thing that I did to these poor youths uh, when they're like, what do I do with my hands? And I'm like, don't ask me that question because I can't tell you. <laughs> By the way, a quick, a quick, since we're geeking out about her fashion really quick, uh, her outfit and day at the races. This is her now out there with Snooki. So cute. So yeah. first off, boom, belt outside of the sweater, sweater belt over the outside of it second mm -hmm. of all earrings yeah she's the only lindy hopper in this group who's wearing earrings let alone sparkly really nice earrings i those earrings definitely i mean you know you know i love myself an earring and so does laurel so I yeah. feel like it's, <laughs> it, it caught my eye i was like okay earrings okay dangle something it looks oh, like she also might have a broken. yeah yeah, she does. Look at that. I'm I'm here to say, as a group, we should bring back brooch wearing. Uh, and yes, some like other people's sweater vests might snag. Not our problem, okay? <laughs> we got to bring back brooches. And if anyone wants to rock the belt outside of the sweater, I will personally give a nod whenever I see you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's like... That's some classic fashion right there, you know, like the way that she, she rocks about, you could do that then, you could do that in the 50s, you could do that in the 70s, you could do that 80s, 90s, and today. Yes, I skipped, skipped a couple decades, Stu it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's the radio, that you can tell my age, because that's definitely the radio I uh, listen to, like the 80s, 90s, and today. <laughs> 80s, 90s, and today. It was the definitely. greatest hits. Was the yeah. was the All right. So, uh, Willa Mae Ricker was not only incredibly fashionable, she was also very dependable. She often managed the groups while they were on tours or gigs, and she was the first dancer Norma Miller remembers finally standing up to Whitey and demanding that the Lindy Hoppers get paid what they were worth. So, um, Whitey. Can we talk about it? Girl power, excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Hashtag feminine life. Yes. Laurel. I mean, everything that I know that like Whitey, uh, Frankie had a special relationship with Whitey. Uh, uh, but that's like, from my perspective, that's kind of like, uh, like, you know how like you have, there's a dog, like this big mean looking dog that won't bite you, but it'll bite everybody else. That's like, Frankie was the one who like didn't get bitten, but everybody else seemed to like <laughs> catch hands, uh, <laughs> often literally, you know, like Whitey was a, he was a gangster. He like his, uh, I mean, he was a force to be reckoned with uh, for better and worse. Uh, and so for like, Willa Mae Ricker, who this uh, this fashionable young lady to be like, I don't, you know, and I think it also speaks to the like the influence that she had within the group to to know that it sh if she said something, it would be taken seriously, and she wouldn't just be like, oh, like that whiny kid, because I mean, if she's ma helping manage, if he if she's um, like seems to be like this advisory spirit like always uh you know you know that whatever partner you put her with she's gonna do well like yeah and yeah some, you don't want to lose her right yeah and some, something that's important for us to all recognize is how age plays a role in this i think so uh Mil willa may ricker was born in 1910 and so she was 
uh, you know, let's say if uh, she's standing up to Whitey in 1937, uh, yeah. she's 27 years old at that time. Yeah. And Norma Miller's like 16, 17 at that time. Like, right. Right. Whitey was very specifically using teenagers and younger dancers who wouldn't put up a fuss, who would be like, well, thank God I got this awesome job. So I'll just put up with anything to get it. Um, whereas, well, you know, Willow May, who's also a badass, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's also a sign that she realized that like, if someone in the group was going to do it, it was going to need to be her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And in, in like North, the mentorship and care is yeah. something we can all take a lesson from. That's yeah. really cool. And then thinking about how she's moving. I mean, I, you know, 27 is younger than me. So I really can't say anything, but like she's, there's no difference in her. Like I would actually say that she's bringing more energy than some of her like significantly younger well, parts in these and and in the later clip i showed you in the killer diller clip that's 1947 so she is or 46 basically she's like 37 in that clip yeah also black don't crack that's where i was just like <laughs> i had no idea that those were her ages puts she's, me to shape she's 72 yeah. years old in that clip <laughs> hey, hey, in the pictures i showed gold. you she's 115 yeah <laughs> i'm like you know what haven't reached 37 yet so that's some goals Right, Laurel? Yeah, right? yeah. I got a year to get on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so uh, when, you know, when, uh, so Frankie Manning was like 27 when he was doing Hell's a Poppin'. And so for a while, that was my benchmark in my like, if I should, okay, so I should theoretically be able to do that kind of thing at 27, right, right. So 27 passes for me. And then Ryan Francois does Frankie's, uh, does Frankie's jam when he's like, 40 something. So I'm like, okay, good. Okay. So I've got another, <laughs> I've got 40 something before I have to worry about like to keep pushing myself. Anyway. Yes. So, Go. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Ryan Francois. Thank you. Yeah. Go. Uh, so uh, <laughs> Nor in Norma Miller's book, when she tells the story of Willa May standing up to, to Whitey, it's hilarious. So first off, Nor uh, Willa May and Snooky Beasley, who was her partner at the time, both uh, kind of like went off and basically they did a gig when Whitey wasn't there to tell them not to do a gig or, you know, basically they went off and did a gig on their own. But it was uh, it, se it seemed like it was perfectly reasonable circumstances, especially to us in the modern age. And Whitey got really pissed off but when it came to Willa Mae Ricker. Willa Mae Ricker. He starts blubbering. And saying, like, how could you do this to me? He basically just turns into a weeping guilt trip. Surrounded by thugs, he is just obviously trying to manipulate. And, and Willa May will not have it. And so Willa May actually got them better pay, got them more respect, and uh, was awesome. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. So during World War II, when Frankie was away, she managed the Congaroos group and, kept, and basically kept it alive. Uh, so that when Frankie came back and was ready to start uh, managing the the group again, she handed it back over to him and she remained a dancer in it for a very long time. And there was even, uh, there's a story where she had to have an emergency hysterectomy. And she somehow both followed her doctor's orders for rest and yet got back on stage <laughs> in an amazingly short time to do the dancing. Um, so she was a beast. Lord, have mercy and she was right. literally uh you, you know you see her pick up al Mins and hell's a pop and like she was very strong and she could throw the leaders around so Truly. following the kangaroos willa may had a second career in fashion according to historian judy pritchett she was a model which does not surprise any of us i'm sure no, of course she was uh she died of cancer in 1978 yeah. thus keeping the scene uh, of the 1980s and 90s and 2000s from being able to have some Willa Mae Ricker firsthand, which is really sad. Cancer took Willa Mae Ricker, Al Mins, Leon James, Jewel McGowan. Screw cancer. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. She was 68. Right. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay. That's young. So we're on to our final follower. There's a famous picture of Frankie Manning. He's looking buff in a sweater. 
He's looking up and his partner's butt is literally about a foot above his head. It's a beautiful picture. Most of you in the Lindy Hop scene have probably seen it. But there's an equally beautiful picture that we don't have. The one that would have been taken from the other side. You would see some unknown leader in a buff sweater, his back to the camera, and a follower flying high above him, her mm -hmm. face perhaps showing the delight of flight. That follower in that picture is Ann Johnson. Frankie said of Ann, she was like a cat. No matter what way I threw her, she would land on her feet. <laughs> she was also a wonderful human being. So we know that Aaron was a daredevil. And together with Frankie, they perfected the incredible sequences that dancers see in Hills of Poppin. With their strengths combined, she'd almost flip vertically in there around the back. Or she'd slide across an entire stage on the slide through the legs. And if you've seen Hells of Poppin', you've seen her bullet through the air for the snatch. Probably their most famous moment. So something I'd love for our, our viewers to, to remember is that even though air steps can give the illusion that one person is like throwing around another person, both partners have to work incredibly a lot. And both partners have to be very strong, especially in order to get what you see Frankie and Ann do. So that's just a little reminder to our viewers about the perception versus the reality of, of what that dancing, what was going on in that dancing. So that slide through the legs that took her across the entire stage, she destroyed so much underwear and had <laughs> most likely gotten so many stage splinters in her butt that she went ahead and put a leather patch on her underwear. She sewed a leather patch to her underwear and there's pictures of her dancing in there. So Ann Johnson was Frankie's partner until 1952. Uh, despite being such an iconic Lindy Hopper, her life story is also pretty much a mystery. We're not sure when she was born or when she died. News uh, newspapers print her name both ways, Anne without an E and Anne with an E, which anyone from Green Gables knows is the preferred way. And I actually lean towards Anne with an E under the gamble that that spelling is very specific. And if a newspaper person writes Anne with an E, then I assume they have asked the person how to spell their name. Um, census shows a black American Harlemite named Ann Johnson, born in 1913. And that's Ann without an E. And the census shows an Ann with an E, Ann Johnson, Harlemite, black American, born in 1923. If that's our Ann, it would make her 14 in her first Harvest Moon Ball in 1937, and around 18 in the time of Hell's a Poppin', which would make her on the younger end, but not out of question. But also, she could just not be in the census. So there's that. Uh, yeah, so let's watch a little bit of Ann Johnson's dancing. Horrible title. Part. From something to something. Iconic. Yeah. It's getting into nerdy stuff again. It's interesting to see her relationship with the floor. Like she's like like a coiled spring, always ready to, to land, you know? So it kind of makes sense that she's like a cat. She's like ready to go. Yeah. She's also the one who has more of that like uh, hunched shoulder position that a lot of people tend to, I mean, I feel like a lot of uh, dancers imitate Ann Johnson and like certain, like depending on where you learned how to dance, but like, yeah. and because she's dancing with Frankie in so many of these clips, like, you're like, of course she's the one you want to watch. But, uh, and I wonder how much like wide leg swivels and. Um, yeah, you know, now that you mention it, um, you know, there's that thought that like Frankie, very strong, like power. There is energy and power. And Ann Johnson, not a large mass of a human being. And so what things is she doing 
to counteract the power so that she can like be ready to coil like a spring or that kind of stuff. So like maybe the wide swivels, maybe the hunched shoulders is basically her just keeping her body engaged and ready yeah. to like act. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, as I see her um, in the air, she's very prepped to, to land. And when you look at her landing, she bounces back, you know, um, I noticed that Willa May kind of um, settles a little bit yeah. before she transitions. Totally, totally. Whereas yeah. like Anne doesn't have like timing wise, she doesn't settle as you know. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love Willa May's movement is that she she is where she is, but she it is but she also has the privilege of doing that because of who she's dancing with. But like you said, Frankie, Anne is like so ready to go. Um, I mean, they all. Yeah. I mean, she's just, uh, uh, like, that, that, uh, like, springy quality, um, yeah. like, even transfers into her, uh, of course, I mean, of course, it translates into her solo movement as, uh, like, this kind of, um, I mean, compact isn't the right word, but it's just like this energy that's, uh, it's like she's vibrating. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's kind of wild. But yeah, go, 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 go. Yeah. And go. Like, you see like as soon as she lands from something, she's like ready to, like she's, like you said, it's like, I really like the spring. She's very springy. And there she goes. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible how how she just slid across the stage. For those of you who can't, you know, slide through Frankie's legs, literally across the stage. And oh my gosh, I mean, like the the nights when she's, I'm sure she's like, I got to sleep on the other cheek. I slid across the floor tonight. <laughs> yeah. You know, just oh, oh my gosh, oh, sure, yeah, right, like her poor bums and thighs, like just like oh. <laughs> and just the power, like you just see so much power. And uh, one, of the, one of the things I love about when I watch Anne is it, it seems like a contradiction, but it's not of the loose, but controlled, you know, like when, when people say like the rag quote, rag doll, unquote, look that, uh, that some of the wise Lindy hoppers got Anne Johnson has that like quote rag dog look because her, her limbs are so loose when she flies. So one leg is flying this way. The other leg is flying that way but she lands like a cat, you know, like Frankie is putting so much energy into her this way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way. And yeah, it looks like, it looks like a rag doll because her legs are so loose and her arms are so loose while she's doing it. But then they go right back under her. It's, it's almost like she's reserving everything for her core until the very end when she. Yeah. It has a, um, Exact. I almost. I was tempted uh, to just pick up the cat that's sleeping next to me and be like, like this, and then throw it. Uh, I did not, dear listeners. I did not throw a cat. I just thought about it. Um, He's lying. But like, if you ever watch a cat uh, um, either fall or get tossed somewhere, it spreads all its legs. I mean, and this. If you if you um, have ever seen anything about like the science of a squirrel surviving a really long drop from a tree or a building or something like that, they're really compact until they're close to hitting the ground and they spread everything out, and that like slows them down. And uh, she's not so high up that she has to like, <laughs> you know, compact first. Well, what I'm getting at is Ann Johnson is a squirrel is what you're trying to tell us. Yeah. A squirrel and a cat. Uh, and uh, I mean, the other thing is like, you can tell, I mean, of course, like Frankie, strong guy, but to go that far across the floor, to go that high, she's being assisted to where she's going. She's not being yeah. just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like tossed. Um, and while I haven't done a lot of air steps in my day, there was a brief stint of cheerleading and there was also an even more brief stint of 
flying and like where you're just getting picked up by two other people and it requires so much control oh, yeah. uh, to stay once you're up there but you also like you may be stepping into people's hands, but you have to assist them in getting you into the air. And that like that strength um, to, to, to control that much energy and then come out of it in a triple step is mind blowing to me. Yeah. It's just incredible. Yeah. This is something I tell my air step students is uh, each partner does 60% of the work. And each partner has to imagine that they're doing 60% of the work. Um, and yeah, it's absolutely, you're absolutely right. Like Ann Johnson is doing a crap ton of work that people don't yeah. necessarily recognize, or, you know, it, it's hard to recognize it because first off it's flying by. Second of all, again, the illusion is that one person is being thrown by another person. Yeah. And I mean, you, like you can start that air step on time, but it's like to finish it on time is another story. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so uh, uh, those are our, clue. yes. Oh, I love that. Man, you're killing the endings of these. <laughs> and with that, those are four incredible black women we can celebrate on World Lindy Hop Day. Frida Washington, Lucille Middleton, Willa Mae Ricker, and Ann Johnson. And once again, we'd like to give a huge thanks to not only Frankie Manning for telling the stories of his partners, but also Cynthia Millman and Judy Pritchett for their work in researching and cataloging the biographies of the original dancers they heard about from Frankie and other dancers and the other dancers who cataloged those stories as well. Awesome. Yep. Let's give a huge <laughs> round of applause for Low Ryan and Tosomo Salamani. You've just been integrated rhythmed. 